Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the snow edition of the town board meeting on Tuesday, uh, February 12th, 12th uh, uh, at 6 p.m. Town of Grand Rapids Hall. First item on our agenda is a public hearing. Uh, Grand Rapids Town Board will conduct a public hearing for the following application. Ryan Ruink at doing business as Stony Hills Trucking LLC, requesting a conditional use permit to conduct a trucking business operation at 3630 Wallasic Avenue, parcel 070152AC and 010152AD, section 10, township 22, Northridge 6, East. Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, actually the Tallner Grand Rapids. Uh, we have the request to do the business, uh, uh, and do you want to give us a quick overview of the business first before we take public comment? Sure. Um, it's a small trucking business that um, I started about a year and a half ago. Um, I'm employed by a company called Western Milk in Thank you. Uh, hearing that, anybody in the audience uh, wishing to speak against the granting of the condition use? Anybody in the audience wishing to speak against the condition of use permit? Third and final call for that. Anybody wish to speak against the condition of use application for the business? Hearing no public comments, uh, anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor of? Any residents wish to speak in favor of? Third final time, any residents wishing to speak in favor of? Hearing none, I'll call the public hearing closed and then call for the regular town board meeting. First item on our agenda would be the Pledge of Allegiance. Sergeant Drinkwine, would you lead us this evening? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. By the way, I did excuse our treasurer, Amy, this evening. Um, item two, approval of agenda. Hearing no comments. Item three, approve minutes from January 8th, 2019 town board meeting. What is your wishes? I'll make a motion to approve the January 8th, 2019 town board meeting. Motion to Andrew. Second. second by Patty. Any discussion or corrections? Additions? Discuss a few things on the agenda. One is the... Um, let me find on the here. minutes? On the minutes, yes. Okay. Uh, item number six. Mm-hmm. Uh, overhead lighting on the Samson. Is mm -hmm. is that the end of this? No, or? I don't think so. Oh, so I, I I know what happened at the county level. Mm -hmm. but, so are we still involved in it? At this point, uh, I w would anticipate that I would meet, be meeting to determine if there's a uh, agreement to be made with an other municipality. If and then if there is an agreement that's possibly to be made, I would bring that to this board as an agenda item to determine whether we wanted to participate or not. I, I, I just think if there's anybody requesting lighting that they should follow the procedure that we have the ordinance for lighting, such as was done in the case on 45th Street. Mm -hmm. A petition was issued. There's been no petition issued to the board at all. So, And then on uh, item number 11, 
It was um, tabled, or what are we doing with that item? And this is referring to the workman's comp meetings. They'll have to reschedule their meeting. That's, I believe, they had to cancel that meeting. Mm -hmm. So that'll be rescheduled at some point. No, we discussed it that time. And then whatever their decision comes, comes back to this board? Yes, it does. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Oh, nope, that's it. Motion was made and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. I have an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. Move to uh, public comment period. Anybody in the audience wishing to speak to the board this evening? Shirley? Yeah, on the Grand Rapids website, um, where it lists the, the day, the date, and then the meetings. Mm -hmm. um, so they're not being listed or like there's you know and then you would say say when the land um, commission or whatever is what you're referring to yeah them. yeah there's a yeah so then like a town board mm -hmm. or whatever the meetings are and then usually there's you know when when the agenda is up the pdf you can click on that and then the agenda okay. comes up is there is there a change there um you know if you go to the current events the calendar, but otherwise, if you were just looking on that page, you would know that there was town board meeting tonight. Mm -hmm. The so, treasurer handles the website. I can have her look tomorrow. I know we did, they revised the website. The company that does it revised it maybe six months ago, so there were some changes to it. Well, this I, is the first time it's oh, happened. Okay, I can, uh, otherwise it's I'll always, take a the look. meetings are always we'll see third there. We'll, we'll check it, maybe it was uh, uh, through the course of the tax collection it got for. for well, so even like the last couple months they were showing? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh okay. I thought maybe this was something. Right, okay, no. Okay. We assume it's an error on the staff. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Anybody else in the audience wish to speak? That we'll move on to item number five, which is our monthly reports. Our first one up will be Fire Chief uh, Bob Pyatt. Good evening, Robert. Good evening, board and citizens. <coughs> Excuse me, I have a cold. <laughs> uh, we are currently staffed with 39 members, two non-structural members, five EMS only members, total of 20. Training to do EMS, we're always looking for good people. Contact us if you're interested. Since the last report to the board, the department has responded to 37 calls for service, consisting of the following, 26 EMS, and the fire department was out 11 times, four mutual aid calls with beer and plover and Nakusa, four multi-vehicle car accidents, two carbon monoxide smoke alarm calls, and one controlled burn false alarm. So our training this last month was EMS was in-house. Uh, we did a med medical jeopardy on assorted topics. If anybody, that's uh, Kevin found a software program and plugged it in. So it was just like playing Jeopardy. Huh. It covered everything from medical stuff. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Um, firehouse, last month we, uh, we did live smoke training in our burn house and did, uh, had United Ambulance came out with us and trained with us. And we did the whole evolution where if a firefighter went down in a fire, uh, going through the whole Mayday procedure, getting the firefighter out, getting them, get their air pack and their gear stripped off, getting them in the ambulance protocol for the rescuers and the rescuee. Um, it was a really good training. So uh, this last month, <clears throat> we did have seven members went and completed the NFPA technician level ice training at Pittsville. I see I didn't put ice training in there. Um, so we now have seven members who are NFPA technician level trained for when we can hopefully get some equipment and with Lake Wazicha being right in our backyard. Uh, three members will be starting Fire Inspector 1 and 2 later this month. Five members are going to a class later this month, an all-night class on car technology, the fire EMS response, addressing the dangers of the new hybrid electric cars. Uh, this last month we had one monthly department meeting, one department officer meeting, two fire training meetings, and one EMS training. Uh, on the agenda for tonight, um, Sarah McCormick was supposed to be here from the Sheriff's Department. She had a scheduling conflict, so if I could, I, I have a, some stuff on the report here, if I could read that Project Lifesaver. Sure. <clears throat> Basically, 
The sheriff's department. I'll, I'll read what I have written here. But the sheriff the project. I, I don't know how familiar the board is with Project Lifesaver. Um, I guess I'll read this, and if you have any questions, I'll. Grand Rapids Fire Department has been contacted by the Wood County Sheriff's Department to be a Project Lifesaver agency. Officer Sarah McCormick and I have had several conversations, and she was supposed to be here tonight, but had a scheduling conflict. Project Lifesaver is a program for autistic special needs individuals where the subject wears a transmitter, and in the event they get lost, we can track them down with some specialized receivers and bring them to safety. The way this would work is two members of our department would attend a training with her probably in late April or early May. It would be an all-weekend all training. And then the two people that would go to that training then would train our own members for this program. Uh, the next, <clears throat> at this point, it looks like we would initially get two receivers from Project Lifesaver. Those would be at no cost to the town. Um, uh, there, there will be no cost for the training other than the fuel meals. Um, after implementation, the only cost to the town would be if we were paged for service normal call and, and uh, use of fire department vehicles. Um, these calls are very low in frequency, but high in consequence. It would be probable that we would get called to another township, just like we do for fire and mutual aid. There are currently 38 individuals in Wood County and 12 of the Project Lifesaver um, individuals in this countywide program live in Grand Rapids. So uh, I'm in full support of this program and, and I hope the board will support it. Um, any questions? Yes, Dave. More of a, just a comment on that. Um, I know Wood County Rescue used to have the receivers for South Wood County. Um, I think it's a great thing that we're getting involved with it. Um, there's a few of us that know about Project Lifesaver and have access to Sarah's information on the internet um, to tell us who, ha who has the um, I guess the autistic children and stuff, so we can respond to that also, because time is of essence. Yeah, in, in my description, I said autistic special needs. Like that, I don't know if you guys remember 12, 15 years ago when they lost that Benji Heil down in Akusa. That was a deal where, where they ended up finding him in the bottom of that pond. But anyways, this is if individuals in that situation get loose, we, we, can, we can try to look, triangulate them using those receivers. Um, Weather like we've had the last few weeks with the snow and the extreme cold, you've got a pretty narrow amount of time to find these individuals. Um, so, uh, like I said, the, 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 the initial training and the initial um, receivers that they get, and, and it sounds like down the line they possibly could get us another receiver or two, but that two would be enough to start with. So it would, it would be our time in the training, and then... Uh, but like I said, be aware that um, right now they're looking to add the, the departments in the county that are on it is Wood County Rescue, uh, Pittsville, Nakusa, and I think Marshfield Fire, I think. And Sarah would like to add Hewitt, Richfield, and Grand Rapids, and um, I'm missing one, potentially Vesper maybe. Anyway, she'd like to... Circle the county. Yeah, yep, and and mm -hmm. so it's very probable, I just want to make that very clear, that it's very probable where we could get called to go up to Rudolph and, and work, look for a kid in Rudolph. So mm -hmm. um, this would entail us leaving the township, but we do that when our neighboring fire departments ask for help as well. So anyways, uh, any questions or whatever? Like I said, I'd kind of like to get the board's blessing. and Go ahead, Bill, and then I'll let you speak on it, ma'am. Go ahead, Bill. Okay. Uh, we're going to discuss this later. Then? Yeah, Number when it gets oh, to that item. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you had a question? And this, is, this is also geared at the folks dementia as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's why I said special needs. Yeah, it, um, Because I yeah. believe my father, he's in the city of Wisconsin Rapids in assisted living, but he was just given one through a grant program, mm -hmm. and it's been very helpful. Yeah. Very, yeah. very um, peaceful. Ten or 12 years ago, we had a, a person with dementia or Alzheimer's down on 48th Street, and we looked for hours. We found him. But they said if they're wearing that receiver, I don't know if it's on their wrist or their, their anklet or, or whatever, they said you can go out with these radio transmitters Receivers. and you can, mm -hmm. you can find their signal and home in on them. So and does this work then, like if, if, the county, if Grand Rapids has two of them, that if there's a resident who 
needs one for autism, special needs, dementia, they approach the the town. No, they know they approach the county. No, the county. our the units we have don't go out to anybody. Those units are for us to use to oh, find to the track. person okay, to track. I'm sorry, I wasn't that clear. Yes, okay, the it. units we have are tracking devices. The units the patients wear are a transmitter. So, any other questions? If not, we'll it will be on that topic when we get to it on the agenda item. Okay. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, anything on the yeah, I'll just finish out my report. Uh, this last month it was kind of sad. We lost uh, one of our honorary members, Dietz Sager. Dietz was on the department for 23 years, from '77 to 2000. Um, anyways, we still have our Red Cross smoke detector program going on. Uh, any residents in the Town that uh, looking for some new smoke detectors put in your house absolutely free of charge and a little safety presentation from Captain Ski. Uh, let us know that they have forms here in the town hall and we have more with the fire department and um, our address sign program is ongoing. So and since the last report there have been no injuries. Any other questions on the board? No. Thank you very much, Chief. Thank you. Uh, Chief Peterson is down at, at uh, seminars or training, and uh, Sergeant Dave Drinkwine is here to give the report. Good evening, board and the public. I Good believe evening. Mel has given you all on the board copies of yes. different things. Um, in the month of January of this year, Grand Rapids Police Department has handled 347 calls of service compared to 324 last year. A 7% increase. Um, we have the sheets for the breakdowns on the calls. The police department has issued 54 traffic citations, 15 ordinance citations, 39 written warnings for the month. Uh, on January 15th, Chief Peterson and Officer Conover went to the new birthing center for his virus river view and took the tour. Um, the river view hospital and clinic <coughs> Um, disaster committee sponsor tours for law enforcement become familiar with, with the excuse me familiar with the layout of the new facility in the event of a critical incident um, the vehicles are doing fine nothing really outside the normal maintenance and Mel's door is always open if you have any comments or concerns you need to talk to me about any questions for me Dave the what's the status of the new squad is that gone up to the my understanding when I left electric company yet? Um, per Friday, when I briefly talked with Mel, we are waiting for two pieces from Sentina. Okay. Otherwise, all the other pieces for it are, are there. ready. Okay. So. Sounds good. Any other? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, it must be a good business to be in. Any mm -hmm. other questions for him? If not, thank you very much. Thank you. You may be excused if you so desire. Thank you. Papers, Patty. Mm -hmm. Oop, that's not it. There it is. We find it here somewhere. I'm going to get change the color of it next time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Treasury report. Amy, as I said, has been excused. Um, I will read the typical items that she uh, establishes for you. Beginning balance was five million three hundred thirty thousand nine hundred thirty-six dollars. Total receipts were twelve million zero four five, uh, with a balance of seventeen million three three ninety three seventy-six. Uh, total date disbursements were thirteen million three ninety-eight. That means the cash balance ending on hand of three million nine seventy-seven five zero three, which means one hundred five thousand four ninety in checking. 994,204 in our repo account, uh, 319,215 in money market, uh, 84,651 in the tax account, and there's a tax repo account, which means we have to pay some of that back to other municipalities or agencies of 2,492,055. So total on hand, as I said, was Three million nine seventy seven five zero three and seventy three cents. Any questions that I can't answer? <laughs> oh, I see that we're going to be paying off the grader in March, a balance of thirty eight thousand. 
so that's mm -hmm. good news. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's always good to get the pays off things. Okay, uh, move on. Item 6, consider a pasta action on resolution 2018-01. Ryan Verink, the doing business at Stony Hill Trucking LLC, request for the conditional use permit. I'll make a motion to approve the resolution 2019-01. I'll second it. Motion by Dan, seconded by Bill. I just have a couple discussion items if I could ask the question. With pertaining to the amount of uh, fluid that's escaped from the trucks in the past, uh, are we led to believe that you've changed something now so that isn't going to happen? With the plants, try to have them remove most of the liquid. We've actually added some, um, some new seals to the doors, uh, better turnbuckles, and then there is a, if there is anything leaking, they are not to leave the property. We'll have it um, contained on the site and, and dealt with. I think what I heard is some of that was when they stopped and they had the splash. Do you have baffles in the tanks or anything? Or? On, the, on the in front of them, and then we've also um, put in place new procedures to not fill them quite as full. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if you go to Marianne, we have two trailers over there right now, so we can prevent that. Okay. Then on site, we were talking about uh, potentially uh, some uh, product being on the ground. Right. Is that the ground as it? comes from there is the product as it comes from there because that's that's got a certain amount of moisture in it if it's getting outside the right and what, what we're talking about mostly is like when Delmonte in the summer is running mm -hmm. they're running 21 hours a day and if we have an issue with the truck or something we would have to ideally we don't want to store anything on the ground but if we would have to dump there temporarily to get it reloaded as an equipment issue. Okay, and that would be dry product, not anything wet, right. because yeah. wet, wet could escape. Okay, any other questions? Um, I just wanted to make a note that um, part of the resolution that we're approving this evening um, indicates that there is, it's Why don't not you read to the three exceed. items. That's okay, mm -hmm. these are the, um, the um, conditions to the permit that we're issuing this evening not to exceed six loads maximum of food waste storage dumped on the premises at one given time <coughs> temporary food waste storage may not exceed one week after dumping which you had felt that that was very reasonable and um, just to let you know that under our zoning ordinance 52.5 under conditional uses uh, we do, we can establish and, and maintain um, conditional use to, um, as a condition so that if we feel that there's any, anything detrimental or in danger to the public health, safety, or morals, comfort, or general welfare, welfare of the public, that we can revoke this conditional use. So um, the Part number three is proposed facility operation will not create the potential for and will take responsible safeguards to prevent the spillage, spillage, leakage, or discharge of substance or waste products of the town roads. And you had addressed that this evening. And the reason why our attorney felt that we should add that as a condition to this permit is that we understand that you are taking safeguards to prevent that from happening but we just want to ensure that that's going to be a you know something that you will continue in your processes so that we don't have the issues with that down the road absolutely for sure thank you okay any other questions bill first and second um so patty they have has brian or the applicant here got a copy of that um, that you just, just, we, we just got a revision tonight. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you got a copy. I, I didn't get a copy of it. The, okay. the, the other thing is just that item three, what she read right. to you, it will provide to you. Yeah. Okay. We, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Bill. And Dan. So how many trailers do you, do you think, in the when they're not at Del Monte's, will, will be stored on the property? Approximately. There's six or so, six to eight, something like that. Six to eight? Yeah. Is that the max then, yeah. do you think? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's the max he agreed to that night. 
Um, six loads, yeah. Right. Yeah, six loads. And um, if, yeah, if yeah, we we, we did talk about the material, but the, as far as empty trailers, right. is that I'm talking about empty trailers right. besides yeah. the six loads. Right. Yeah. At our January 14th meeting, that was discussed, and um, there were um, it was indicated approximately five trucks and not you know um, approximately eight trailers, and so our plan commission had agreed that that was reasonable for the area. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing not, there was a motion and second, correct? All in favor say aye. Aye. I have an aye. Any opposed? All right. You're good, sir. Let's uh, do a good job for us. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Good luck. Item seven is consider possible action for a temporary Class B liquor license for the bluegrass uh, at the lake, June 7th and 8th, 2019. You are here, correct? Yes. Okay. Same as last year? Fenced in, where the where the alcohol will be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, somebody for checking. The, are you got to wristband people, or are you going to uh, check every time? Oh, we banned. Wristband. Okay. And I'll make a motion that we approve um, the temporary Class B liquor license for the bluegrass on the lake. I'll second. Motion by Dan, second by Patty. Any other questions? Good. None. All in favor say aye. Aye. I'm an aye. Any opposed? No opposed. You're good. Yeah. Now let, let the snow melt. Yeah. Yeah. Item 8 consider action on the fire department to become a project lifesaver agent. I guess you, you heard Bob's discussion of it. There is uh, no direct cost to us other than the cost if we do have to uh, assist in the finding of it, obviously it's the, the on-call $15 for the labor or, or whatever. That would be our direct cost. So questions? Well, let's make a motion first. You can have a motion. I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, second um, project lifesaver. Okay. And second. Approved. Seconded by Andrew. Now questions. All right. <coughs> so, Go ahead. No, 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 no. Um, my question was, even if without this program, when, when there is one of these situations that arise, we get paged. We, we've been paged in the past. So as far as additional cost, I really don't see that there's going to be any because whether we have the transmitters or not, um, most likely we're going to go. You know, in the past we have. So, and we're going to use our equipment. We're going to. Mm -hmm. William, did you have a? Yes. Yeah, you know, I, I, I'm not speaking against this. I'm just saying that the Wood County Health Department also has this. And this is, we, we have a full time person in the health department that does it. The uh, sheriff's department does it and has these transmitters. And in reviewing this and going back on my notes, and, and this is just recent, there, there, there were seven people in the Tower of Grand Rapids. But it was even noted when the county went to this of the fact that 8.5% of the people in the town of Grand Rapids are over 65. You know, it's just, they, they, I, I can remember two of people that, um, you know, what do you call it? When, when you get old, and, you can't remember things. and they, they they left and found the guy down at the lake and things like that. I I, I just feel that this is uh, should be looked at further uh, uh, in, in the fact that I, I'm just afraid it's just going to go into because in most places that have this around the country and a fire department, for instance. Uh, they have a coordinator and an assistant coordinator for this. Maybe they have more cases, but most of the fire departments that are listed that, that have this, I didn't think <coughs> needed it. That's, that's, that's just my opinion. I, I think it should be studied more. But. Andrew? 
So, Bill, and I don't know where the research with those departments, how involved they are, and I agree that if we are going to do a full program where we are going to implement a full program and issue the transmitters, monitor all that stuff, change the batteries, all those things, I think that would definitely require that. When what our department's going to do is just assist in the rescue operations should one of these individuals that's in our town or in our community go missing. And there is a lot on the back end that, that is done with this. The sheriff's department handles the battery changes, handles the effort, the applications and the changes of all the people. And not just everybody that wants one gets one. There's a process, so the application process, they have to apply for it. They have to meet certain criteria um, to be able to be given a, a pro the Project Lifesaver band. And then we go and the deputies at the sheriff's department literally go around and change these batteries when they need to be changed to keep make sure that they're being active and they're they're being used properly. Um, I think, you know, should we get used? I don't think it's going to be real often. I, I don't think, um, I don't think. Pri I mean, of, of all the individuals that have them, um, I don't think there's been an incident in the last year. But it's you never know; it can happen in any day. I hope it's, we never do after you. Like, like you said, they're 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 of low frequency, but they're of high consequence. Yep. And they have at the sheriff's department have used them to find people before that have went missing, mm -hmm. and they are very very successful. And I just think that we have that uh, they reached out, and I think it's a great program for us to be a part of. Um, where we have to be able to have two units here at no cost for any of this equipment and for them to be able to be providing us a substantial amount of resources to us to have in our town here to be able to use at uh, really no cost to us other than just being able to be available for the service calls. I agree with Dan, we're going to be there anyways. And, and I think, um, I, I agree, I agree, Bill, if we were running a program and starting our own version of a program, I think there'd be a lot more that we'd have to have, but um, being that we can just kind of assist this program by providing the rescue operation side of it and not the maintenance of these bands and the process of the applications for the candidates coming through, we're just providing it in, in terms of you know the rescue efforts. I, I really think this is really important for us to do and, and a great service for the residents in our town that are uh, participating in this program. And I think that that 12 people that are participating in our town out of the 38 and in Wood County is a lot. Um, when you look at the population of Marshfield and Rapids and all the towns in between, to have 12 in our own backyard is significant. So I think we should definitely okay. be doing this. We all have to Anybody else? Yeah, I do. Okay. Um, so after hearing a little bit more about what this pro program is, um, our community is getting older, and I know that there are a lot more dementia or autistic children um, out there. Um, as if we were going to be developing a program where we're doing the maintenance, where we're changing, we're selecting people, I would, um, if we were going to go to that part, I would, um, ask or refer it to go to the Police and Fire Commission for their review or recommendation or the Safety Committee. But being that this is just to receive... We would just be an agent. An agent, yeah. meaning, and the responsibilities of an agent is to, if if there is a call that someone is, is in need or lost, then we would go and um, assist in finding them I don't see any problem with us being an agent. I, is there any other um, part of being an agent? Um, if there's no calls within a year, then I, you have to promise the Sheriff's Department that you'll, you'll conduct a drill to go out and, or they'll coordinate it with you, that you'll go out and they, you, they want you to practice with the units once a year. Okay, so, so it would be part of your training, training. enhanced yeah. training that... Sure. Yep. And, and the officers greeted it with open arms, and I already had a handful of people raise their hands that they'd want to participate in it. And mm -hmm. like I said the thing is with the search and search and rescue operations and for lost people with are are difficult in nature to begin with. But if you've got somebody with a transponder on or, or the transmitter or whatever, and then you can get out there right away. Like I said, if, if the weather's severe, like it's been the last month, you, you don't have a big window of time. Right, and then, if I may, just to finish up, um, so we're not involved in 
trying to decide who Correct. is determined, who receives it, nope. or any of that. We would just be an agent. If they need help tracking somebody, we'll get called. That's okay. And did you have another comment? Well, yeah, just just be as I was all, one of the members that was on that helping Nakusa look for that lost boy that night. And when you don't know what direction somebody goes, mm -hmm. the more of these receivers out there, the better. Yeah, there are some some in the area, but the more <laughs> the merrier because you can go in different directions and you know it. Um, is it would ping be. Zone? Does it? Yeah, you know, is that much. how you? Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd kind of point you in the right direction. The, the only comment that I'll make is that the the greatest share of the lost person. Uh, events seem to be at dark, after dark. You can't see them. You have very limited visibility. So, go ahead. And I, I, great sheriff we got now. But if this ends up, if this ends up to be a rescue truck situation, like the last time, because the sheriff's department runs it, we have the health and human services also. We get somebody in there that says, oh, they want everything down at the south. We're going we're gonna to stop that, you know. We just went through something like this. So I'm voting for it, but I just say the, be cautious of it. Very good. Understand. Any other comments? Hearing none, call for the vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Motion carries. Item 9 is to consider possible action on a to direct Wood County Trust Bank to replace prior free fire chief's name uh, with Chief Pyatt's name, uh, Chief Robert Pyatt's name, on the fire department checking account. You got the memo as to the reasons why, and that's just something we have to have on our agenda. Motion. By Patty. Patty, second by Andrew. May our discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Uh, you're in trouble now. All right, 10. Considerable and possible action on Wood County's Natural Hazard Preparedness Mitigation Questionnaire. I shared this with everybody, but I also asked Chief Pyatt to assist with whatever parts of it that uh, we can. So Bob has got a lot of stuff on there, and I thought maybe with what we should just do acknowledge to Wood County that we are going to complete this. We'll get a copy from uh, Chief Pyatt as to where he has and let everybody then see it and can offer any comments that you want to comment at the next meeting. Does that work? Yeah, didn't we, didn't uh, Chief Bone do this? Like we had a similar one. Ago? We had a similar one, but that one, that one was more in detail where it had to list who is in chain of command uh, when there was any hazardous event. And William, you had a hand? <laughs> and I went with that same document to our uh, emergency management office. And, you know, and they're available to you. Steve Cruz will okay. help you out on this. And, I've got it mostly done here. I, can, yeah. I should be able to get you guys. Uh, but uh, uh, in the last one we did, Steve Cruz was not even uh, uh, seen. He just got a copy of it. Okay. And so. So you said we're just going to have a special... I, no, I, what I would do is have him, uh, now that he's got it fair, almost completed, he'll get it to us and he will present it to you before or to the next meeting. Okay. And then we can, if there's any quick comments that you think we need to put on there, then we can uh, take them on at the next meeting. Right. Would you have it so that we had some time yeah. before the Yeah, meeting? I'll okay. make sure you've got it within, within a week. All right. Do you need a motion nope. or something? Nope. Okay. Just, uh, well, I guess we should can, uh, make a motion that we are no, that we are working on it and we will have it completed and turned to the county. They want something on record that we're actually doing this. Okay, second what you said. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I import once in a while, huh? Yep. <laughs> any discussion? Hanging on, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, discuss attendance on the upcoming WTA meetings. Lisa's going to make some uh, checks out here. I myself will be hopefully going to the March 1 on a Saturday, March 30th. Bill, you wanted to go to Nielsville, was it? Nielsville. That's on the... Can't go on that one on Saturday. You want to get that phone right 
and the Niels will and what date was that? Uh, that was that was the Friday the, the 22nd. Anybody else wishing to go to any of these? I may go March 16th or the 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, possibly the 30th. Okay. I'll get with. All right, but uh, we'll get bills. Maybe just bills. I in. paid you and Bill because we cut checks last okay. week because yeah. we saved. They called me. You. They called. Oh, okay. They called and asked what one I was going to. Oh, yeah. We and I talked to her the other day too. Yeah. She's got you yeah. both down. You're good. Okay, you got me down for. Yep. March. Okay. Then, then when you confirm that up, either one of you or okay. the rest of you, yeah. please let her know and she'll cut check for you. Uh, January disbursement vouchers. Any questions? Anything to say? I do. Yes. <coughs> Quite noisy this evening. It's the volume's off, too. Oh, it's my Jesus. Pat Barrett? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> There we go, Dan. <laughs> Our breather license. You guys need me anymore? Can I go on that medical? No, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Mm -hmm. The uh, Pittsburgh Fire Company one, what was that? Well, that's the ice cream one. Mm -hmm. um, two weekends ago? Yep. I thought that was what that was. I just did a good day, so I just wanted to make sure. Excuse me, we have the preview and radio. Oh, that. Exactly. Yeah, you get this. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to ask you to read it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we set? Yes. Operator license applications. Uh, Patrick Bartlett, uh, one year. Brenda Bella. Emma Bertado. Ethan Herr. Cheng Kong. And Casey Owens. All one year been approved by the chief. I'll make a motion to approve. Patty, second by Andrew. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Monthly reports from committees. Uh, crew is out finishing up plowing. They should be done in, within the next hour, and then obviously they'll be back in first thing in the morning trying to clean it up again the way it looks. Uh, all equipment working, no issues with anything. Uh, we are running carbide tip blades on a, on a lot of the plow blades now. They last about seven to eight times the length of a, a normal steel blade now. City doesn't use them. I asked. I had a conversation with them, and they said because they got so many uh, manholes that keep getting hit oh, with theirs, yeah. they tear the tear the blade the mm -hmm. chips off. So working real go good. Uh, Rick's new truck is in. Uh, he's got the bed liner sprayed and working on getting the equipment. He's said with this weather, he's not too much of a hurry to get it into service. Yeah, there you go. He's driving a fall truck all day. Yeah. yeah. Nice and by the way, if anybody wants to ride with him at any point in time, you're welcome to. I, I did a couple of our ride the other night. The trucks aren't too bad. They ride pretty comfortable. Pretty interesting. Yeah. Did you and say I, how many? Uh, we have three. Yeah, and they're out. Yeah. Yeah, everybody was out today. And uh, the only other thing we've got is that we still continue to have a little issue when we call a a uh, snow emergency with a lot of vehicles on the side of the roads. And people should just realize that when it's snowing, obviously the snow plows are going to need to come by and put the snow somewhere. So I just ask that they... Uh, take it a need and to move the vehicles off, if you would, please. Any questions? Okay, move to the airport commission. The airport has commission did not meet yet, other than uh, yesterday the uh, uh, manager met with two of our engineering firms that are working on projects to coordinate with them on the spacing of the building so we don't run into an issue with, uh, no, I'm going to put this building here, and the other one said, no, that's where that electric wire is going to go. So that was primary decisions that needed to get made for the possible new hangar. 
Uh, the 2018 annual review uh, was generated by Jeremy. I will give you all a copy of it. But highlighting, we did complete the construction of runway 1230. That's the short runway that was con totally rebuilt. Uh, construction of taxiway B, which is attaches to it. Uh, resurface of runway 220, that's the one mile long uh, runway. Installation of the new edge lights, threshold lights, end light, and signage on runway 1230. Uh, same thing on taxiway B, the edge lights. Completion of uh, on, uh, 220, the long runway, the edge lights, threshold lights, end lights, and signage lights. And those were all LED replacements, so they're all, the whole airport now will be LED signed rather than bulb lit that burns out every other week. Uh, they completed the installation of the new apron lighting. Uh, five five lights uh, towers were put up. Uh, four of them are functioning. One of them is apparently a defective unit or got wired backwards or something. But as Bill said, when you drive by, there's a lot of light on the airport now. Uh, the construction was started on the apron expansion, the stormwater mitigation, uh, which including the lighting, uh, the paving. Paving is about three quarters done. That was not able to get completed within the contract length uh, due to uh, American Asphalt uh, claiming that they are going to do it. Uh, so the runway has not been painted. In other words, the center lines of the runway has not been painted either. Uh, planning and design for taxiway A, which is a parallel taxiway to the entire one mile length of the main 100 foot wide runway. That's uh, Design is done. The bid's been let. Construction project is going to start in May. Uh, we believe May of uh, 2019, which is this year. And that's a federal, state, and commission project. In other words, it's 90% federal money, 5% state, and 5% the commission. So the commission will have to uh, put up about 150, no, about 50,000, excuse me, out of our stipends that we get from the federal government every year. Uh, and the con we're continuing the planning and design of the hangar construction uh, to uh, complete the use of the two uh, of the basic five million dollars that we got through the state grant. As far as his operations for the year, uh, eight, nearly 800 transient aircraft during the golf season was recorded. We exceeded budget net profit by over sixty thousand dollars. That was a good thing. Operation specs expenses were within budget. Fuel sales nearly doubled in 2017. We did purchase two uh, major items. Uh, one was called a lav cart, which allows the uh, draining of the holding tanks for the larger jets. Uh, we also ordered a, and purchased a ground power unit, which is $35,000, and which uh, generates power for those uh, larger jets to uh, warm them up before they fire their motors up. And we were very fortunate to receive 100% on our quality control and systems condition inspection, and that's pertaining to the fuel system. They inspected all our procedures, looked at all our test results, and verified that we're doing everything according to how we're supposed to be testing for contaminants in our fuel system. And he says, the examiner said he only gives a couple of perfect scores a year, so Jeremy was pretty proud of that. Hosted 11 tourist of groups, churches, schools, civic groups, and social. Hosted our first ever business after hours event. Hosted a groundbreaking ceremony to co commemorate the state grant funding and hosted two hamburger flying social events. Uh, and planted in the next near future is a, is a young eagles fly event where young people are going to be offered a chance to take rides for probably the first time and that's going to be coming up as the weather breaks. And, there will be a lot of lo local pilots uh, working with that, plus some people that will fly in to offer flights to these young people. Any questions on the airport? Didn't we get the pump, a larger pumper truck or um, fuel truck this past year, or was that already we, we a did, year before? No, that was actually about a year ago. That's that's a 3,000-gallon fuel okay. tank, and uh, uh, I don't believe it's big enough yet, but that's another story. Okay. <laughs> All right, any other questions? That will move on to recycling. Bill, you met or are you yeah, going to be? We met on the 8th. Um, we met at 3.45 in the afternoon and we adjourned at 5.05. Uh, 
Uh, there was a number of people who were to show up, but they couldn't on a Friday afternoon, I guess. So, but anyways, uh, we got, uh, we would be coming to the board with um, choose to reuse dates, uh, permission to have them. It will be on, or I added the next meeting, but it'll be the third Saturday in May and the third Saturday in September, which is May 18th and September 21st. Uh, also, we worked on our annual report, and Patty is, does a good job on the computer, uh, whatever she calls that program, and so we're getting uh, material for our annual report. Um, we just need, I now see you, we need a few things. So, uh, otherwise, uh, that's it. I'll be sending the minutes. I have a copy of the minutes. Patty has already sent me a copy of them. And, I'll be sending them you all a copy of the minutes. Okay. Any questions? Well, the, the cost for the electronic is the same as it was last year. Okay. I checked with Midwest Computers up in Marshfield. They're the recyclers for ODC. Yeah, just a comment, Bill, on, on tires. Are, is our, are we increasing the amount of tires that we're getting or decreasing the amount of tires? Increases in the way getting more. I, uh, now a couple of places have changed yet. There was a few places, I didn't want to advertise for it, but there was a few places taking tires for $2 a piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, and if you bought them, it was a, the tires there, it was a dollar. So now they've all up. Everybody is $5 for a, for a car tire. And uh, What's it for a battery now? Is that like $15? We, you get, we don't, we collect the batteries, but we give them to um, the iron company. For, sure, as part of their. Yeah, you know, for their pickup. Sure. But yeah, yeah, batteries right now are, fifth. The, the most valuable recyclable right now is cardboard. <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> cardboard. Well, they must have been happy with me the other days, because boy, I loaded them up. Yeah. <laughs> that's the most valuable. And apparently there's still people that don't think that you need to put, put properly recycle your tires. Uh, apparently there was a drop of a whole bunch of tires up in the northern part of the county. I believe they found the person. Five? No. No. Babcock. Oh, yeah, Babcock. Yeah, in the wood county. And yeah. they did, they did uh, find out who that was. Yeah, they did. Oops. It wasn't who you were giving tires to, Bill, was it? <laughs> All right, Patty, uh, Plan Commission, what can you tell us? Um, well, last time we met on January 14th, where the Plan Commission or the Town Board met on January 8th. So, to recap January's um, agenda item, we had um, two um, dog exemption permits. Then we also um, spoke to the Stony Hill, which we had this evening. And then we are um, also reviewing and creating a, uh, we found that the land use permit and the general zoning permit were almost identical. And so we're creating a new form to um, encapsulate both of them um, into one form. So we'll, um, we'll be presenting that. Um, we're going to, we discuss that on our February 11th meeting and so we made some more additions or corrections on that so we'll uh, review that in March and then we um, spoke a little bit about our comprehensive plan and then also um, I received permission or suggestions for the annual report for the Plan Commission and also the building inspector and zoning report so the meeting in Febu on February 11th we had um, a comprehensive, um, a recommendation that will be coming to our town board for comprehensive plant map change and rezoning from an R2 residential to agricultural. It's 18 acres. Um, also, we had another dog exemption, and then we reviewed the land use slash zoning permit application and we discussed the comprehensive plan we were where we're going with that uh, we we're sent home with some um, homework that we'll be doing and um, coming back with 
ideas in March. And then I presented the annual reports for the plan commission and also the building and zoning report. So that was approved and so we're ready for that. All right, any questions? Public buildings, uh, Dan Ann? No, we never met. Uh, we will be just uh, starting on some of the 2019 budgets. Yeah, I think we need to get that archive room heater yep. going. Yeah, it's pretty cold there, and, the, and those records are sensitive to eat cold. cold. All right, any questions for him? Legislative has not met, but we will be in the near future. Uh, public safety, Andrew? Public safety has not met. We will be soon. Um, Chief Pyatt had gotten, um, gotten us a response on his plan or some ideas for the plan moving forward on uh, truck replacement and equipment replacement uh, needs in the next several years. So we're going to be reviewing that, and that would, should be here soon. Okay. Any questions? Economic development, Patty? Um, I just want to mention that the groundwater group is scheduled to meet February 18th at the Wood County River Block meeting in room 206, if anyone wants to attend on that. Okay. Personnel committee? I have not met. Okay. WTA meeting, you want to recap it, Bill? Yeah. Much there. Yeah, we were right. We were met at Harborndale, and we had the sheriff there. So I think this is about the second one that he showed up at. Uh, then the next one. More than the other sheriff, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, glad to see a new face there. Uh, yeah, he th he talked about. He had uh, a couple of people with him too. That, that's that's what's nice about bringing. And also, you know, the sheriff was there, and you know, at the county level, the sheriff shows up for a lot of the meetings too, which is, is a good thing. Um, that's about it. The next one is going to be in the town of Richfield. It's the town of Cameron, and it's going to be in the Richfield uh, oh. town of Richfield town hall and fire. Mm -hmm. I'm County Trunk Eight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, any questions for him? Reports, individual town board members. Andrew, got anything else? Nope, I don't know. Patty? Yeah, I just want to mention, um, here's the report for the Southwood County Humane Society that was um, issued to us. Um, this is what they wrote. As another year has passed, we look back over 1,200 animals that have come through their shelter doors. We're grateful for the support we receive from the community with every animal that is brought in. Here's a glance at our numbers from 2018. The strays and um, seized were 686. Surrenders were 245. There's a category of other, which I'm not quite sure what that um, is all about, but that's 307. Cats were 513. Dogs were 706, and then they also had another category of 19. What it, is the other? Yeah, yeah there's, there's actually two others, so I'm not quite sure what that well, is. Well, if, if, if you look through this uh, detail, you'll find guinea pigs. Ah, uh, okay. Okay. So um, they just said thank you for their support. Yeah. Okay, any? Oh, nope. I'm going down that way, Dan. Nothing. William. If he has nothing, I have. <laughs> oh, Why, do you guys compare notes or what? <laughs> All right, the last thing I do is uh, I need to just briefly let the board know that there's a topic coming up from the county and uh, th through some municipalities called Soul Smart. It's a solar smart program. Uh, I'm digging into the detail of it. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that there's anything going to happen or it will happen. But what my intention is, is once we get enough uh, information between Jason Grunberg, myself, and uh, Nancy, and I forgot her name right now, that's direct, that's running this uh, program. I will ask her to come and meet with the board and the plan commission on a joint meeting and go over the topic and give us good understanding, good, bad, and the ugly of it, and we'll go from there. And that's just my update. Uh, I just want to tell everybody, stay safe, drive carefully, and just remember, you are in Wisconsin. The, the roads may look wet, but it could be black ice. Thank you very much, and I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. Patty. Second. Andrew. 
All favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No opposed. Thank you very much, folks. Art, and we thank you again.